In a previous video, it was discussed how to create a custom database and load that database into your project. One of the things that that video talked about was if you create a new classification that was going to be assigned to a parameter, that parameter had to be created already in your Revit model. This video will show you how you can use the database to create parameters for you automatically. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here inside this model, if I zoom up and pick on something, I'll pick on this lavatory and go up to my interoperability tools and open up the assigned classification. In here, we have different databases. And these databases that are listed over here on the left that we can load in are preloaded with the parameters that it needs to use for, the, for these classifications. But if I go down to the pick list, this is where you can create your own custom database. But in here, there's a couple that come with the program when you install it. One of them is the family subcategories. If I simply load this family subcategories database and use it, you can see that it already filtered out and got me down to plumbing fixtures. And I can expand that out and just tell it that we want to use the lavatory. Now these are using a parameter that is not created in this project yet. But when I assign this, it's going to automatically create that parameter for me. So when I hit assign, it goes ahead and assigns that parameter. And I can close this and go into my type properties with that plumbing fixture selected. And I can see at the bottom down here that it assigned the lav and lavatory to the family subcategory abbreviation and the family subcategory name. And again, those two parameters were not there before I did this, but, but that, that process created those two parameters. So that's what I'm talking about. How can we create the, uh, these two parameters using the database and how can we make our own parameters um, through this process? So the first thing you need to understand is where is um, there's some templates that come with the program. And if I open up um, my folders to go to my C drive, Program Files 86, Autodesk, AIT, and then the release year, in this case it's 2024, and then the resource folders, you'll find the databases. So here's all the out-of-the-box databases. <clears throat> and in here, there is a custom database. And this is the one that you'll want to copy and, and modify to create your own custom database. But um, before we open that up, I want to show you this subcategory database. This subcategory database is the database that is used in that family element uh, classification list that I was just looking at. And so if we take a look at this, this is um, listing out all the, all the uh, classifications that are available in here that's been created. But up here, it's listing out the two parameters that it's going to use. It's going to use the family subcategory abbreviation and the family subcategory name. Um, those are the two parameters that it created. And the, re the, why, the reason why it created these two parameters we'll find down here on the parameters tab. So at the bottom, we'll have a parameters tab. And on this parameters tab, any parameters that are listed here, it's going to create those parameters. And so, um, you know, the way this works is you can list out the parameters here to be created. Um, and they're only going to be created if we have a tab down here that is using those parameters. And so we could have 10 parameters listed out here that is to tell it to create. Um, but if we only have five tabs here, it's only going to create five parameters because, you know, that's all that's listed here. And so um, this parameters tab is a master list of the parameters that we want it to create. And then it's only going to create them if they are listed on the tabs. So in here, if we look at this parameter tab, um, this is listing out uh, two parameters. It is listing out, first of all, it's calling out whether it's a type or an instant type parameter. It is creating a parameter. It's got the GUID um, ID there, and it's got the name of the parameter that's going to be and the type of parameter, um, whether it's text or an integer or a number, um, whatever it is, um, the type of parameter is listed there as well. And so when we create this, we can create any parameter we want to, and it doesn't have to be preloaded or pre-made inside of our project. 
So what I want to do, I want to show you how we can start from scratch and create um, some sh uh, some new parameters inside this database and have it populate those parameters inside my project. And so I'm going to switch over and um, close out of this and go back and open up the, um, uh, actually a copy of this classification manager um, custom database. And again, I, I do recommend that you make a copy of this and, and don't modify the original. Um, that way you always have the original intact there. But I do have a copy of this up here in my folder that I'll, I'll go ahead and open up. And inside of here, um, I, I've done a couple of things to kind of help us get started in this. Um, but in this, this, this file, you'll see that we've got some tabs down here at the bottom. We've got an instruction tab that tells us you know, how to do this. And, and by the way, on this instructions tab, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it does talk about this parameter tab and how you're supposed to use this parameter tab. Um, so that's there if you need that. It has some um, tabs down here at the bottom. It's got a parameters tab um, that we'll look at. Right now it's blank, there's nothing there. It also ha has a facility tab and a space tab and a products tab. I've gone ahead and filled in some information down here for these tabs um, as far as the data that we want to use in the database. But the one thing I have not filled out on any of these tabs, the facility space or products, I've not filled out the, the, the pr parameter name or number. And so um, those are all blank in there. So um, they have not been filled out appro appropriately, um, which is what we're going to focus on. And so in here, I want to create some new parameters. And so I'm going to use this parameter tab to do it. And one of the things that was um, it's kind of neat about this is this is all set up so that we can take advantage of the parameters that we have in our shared parameter file. So we can use, if we have a shared parameter file, we can essentially open that shared parameter file up and copy and paste that information into this, this spreadsheet um, without any changes or any format changes at all. Um, and everything should work. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up a shared parameter file that I have that we can use to copy from. So in this shared parameter file, um, it's not too long, but I've got some in here. I've got some parameters in here for facility, for uh, for space, for type. Um, I notice I've got two in here for each one of them, uh, both a description and a number. Um, but that's, that's what I want to copy in. So I'm going to highlight starting right here and highlight everything in this shared parameter file below the header names. And with everything highlighted, I can right click. I'm just going to copy this to my clipboard and then I'm going to go back to my Excel uh, spreadsheet and on in cell B4, not the A4, but I'm going to jump over to the column B and in B4, I'm simply going to paste it. And so I'll use my control V and paste that in there. And you can see that the formatting comes in great. Um, it, you know, as far as the columns and everything, I don't have to reformat it or move things around. Everything is there as far as the names and, and the, the type of parameter, everything that we need. The one thing we didn't copy in was whether this is a type or an instant parameter. So I will need to go in and assign that th th this is an instant or a type parameter in here. So as I fill this out, I want to make sure that I fill it in correctly. And you, one thing you need to understand is that some of these um, types of categories will not allow you to have uh, type parameters. For example, spaces, they do not have type properties, and so spaces will have to be an instant parameter. Uh, same thing for facility. Uh, facility will only um, allow you to have instant parameters in there. So as I fill this in, I'm gonna type in instant for this first facility one. Um, the next one is also going to be an instance. The, the next one is a, a um, uh, my parameter type description. This one I, I will do type. And the next one will be instant as well. And uh, instant for this space parameter and instance for this instant parameter. And then this last type parameter will be a type parameter. And then I've got one more instance parameter. So you do need to fill that in, whether they are going to be instant parameters or type parameters. Once you have that filled in, um, it should work as far as coming up in the right properties dialog. 
now that I've got that typed in, the last thing that I need to do is 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 fill in over here the name and the and the num the name of the parameters that I want to use up here in my uh, on my specific tabs. And so you can just copy and paste these. And so if I go back and copy the um, use my Control C and copy this uh, facility description. Um, it's going to come in for the description down here, and I can just paste that in there. Now, this is, um, you know, you may need to make sure you spell this correctly and make sure that, you know, the capital letters do matter. So copy and pasting is the best way of doing this to make sure that you get it exactly right. So there's that one. I can go down to my facility number and copy that one as well and paste that in there. Once you have that done, you can simply just save this database. Once you save it, um, we can reload the database into our project and we should be able to see this. So I'm going to switch back over to Revit and show you how we can load that in. So if I switch back to Revit, I'm going to go up to uh, assign classification and go down to my pick list. I do need to load this in there. So I'm going to hit the uh, setup icon in here and pick on load new, new pick list. And once I do that, I'm going to browse real quickly and find that um, that database that I want to bring in and use. Once I load it, I'm going to go back to my pick list. I do have to pick here to load it into this project. Once it's loaded, I can see that I have both the facility tab and the element tab. I'm trying to assign a classification to a specific element. So if I pick on this and, and expand this out, I can see that it found um, plumbing fixtures and this is going to be assigned to be a, maybe a domestic water plumbing fixture. And I can pick on assign. And when I do this, it's going to automatically create those parameters um, into my project. So if I close out of this and show you in the type properties, it will have at the bottom of my type properties those two parameters and that there they are right there. I put the word my in front of it to, to so you could see that these were my parameters that I've created. So there's my parameter type description and my parameter type number um, and it's filled in the data for you. And so with that, you can see that you can easily bring in um, parameters, uh, classification values and have it create parameters for you automatically. So to wrap this up, I want to give you some final thoughts and some recommendations. If we, um, first of all, this, this is only for advanced Revit users. You need to have a great understanding of how shared parameters work. And, you know, this is not for the novice um, in there. Uh, so that's the first recommendation. Number two, uh, only allowed parameters, uh, data types are text, integers, numbers, yes, no, and URLs. And so any other type of parameter uh, type will not be accepted in, in, the, uh, in the tool. Classification Manager will only create the parameters if it finds it on the data tab. So remember, you can create as many as you want on the parameters tab, but if they're not on the data tabs, it will not create them in your project. It will add the parameter to the default Classification Manager categories automatically. And so those categories are, are predefined inside the program. Uh, we can't add to those categories. Those categories are what they are. And databases are not backwards compatible. Um, this function, as far as that parameter tab, was added to the Classification Manager 7.2 and later, uh, which is supported by Revit 2018 and forward. Um, so if you do ha have a newer project and you try to open up, uh, I'm sorry, an older project and you try to open up a newer database, just know that it's not backwards compatible. And so, um, you know, it, it's available for version uh, 2018 and forward. So with that, that's how you can use the Classification Manager database to automatically create your parameters for you.